We looked at the Canon R5 last year, and since then, Canon have released more and more firmware updates to improve the camera, and though it has its issues with overheating, it still is one of the best hybrids on the market, as long as you understand its limitations. Today, we are looking at an update I've been really excited for. This is Canon's new 1.3.0 firmware for the R5, and it brings a huge range of new features. These consist of a range of additional formats, including Cinema Raw Light, a few IPB light options, and a 120p Full HD mode. It also brings C-Log3 and a range of smaller additions. But let's dive into these changes properly and see how it changes the camera, as well as answer a few of your questions about the new firmware. We did a little YouTube community post, and so many of you asked if the firmware had improved the overheating, which unfortunately it has not. Canon's official statement is that this new firmware has not brought any extensions to any recording times, which is a shame. We haven't run full overheating tests since the camera was initially released, but it does seem people have had better performance with the firmware before this than the firmware at the release of the camera. There is also a battery pop-out trick that people have been using to reset the time limit for recording before overheating, and that seems to still be working with this new update. Just be careful not to push your camera too hard, as obviously this can cause damage to your sensor. We shot a mini documentary last year with two R5s and a C300 Mark III, which we were going to release as part of our R5 image testing, but so much has changed since then. I don't think any of our thoughts on overheating from that really hold any weight still. However, the only thing I would say is that we got the job done, even with them overheating fairly quickly, and as a stills camera, the R5 is still absolutely sublime. One of the biggest additions is C-Log3 being added to the R5. Before looking at the visual differences between C-Log and C-Log3, let's quickly talk through the technical difference. When we talk about a log curve, what we are referring to is a gamma curve that has been designed to capture as much of the information recorded by your camera's sensor as possible. Canon produces three of these curves, C-Log, C-Log2, and C-Log3. We can see all three of these curves mapped out onto this graph here. This shows the 10-bit code value on the left, which has its black point at 128 and white clip point at 1020, and relative stops from 18% gray along the bottom. What we can see from this is how each curve differs from each other. Let's start off looking at C-Log and C-Log3, which are actually quite similar to each other. They both map their shadows out quite similarly, with their ideal 18% grey points being the same at 34.3%. However, things start to change as you reach around two stops over mid-grey, where C-Log becomes steeper than C-Log3, with them both finishing at 1024, roughly one stop apart from each other. If we look at C-Log2, we can see that this curve is very different to the previous curves. We are starting off lower into the blacks and raising them as we hit our 18% grey of 39.8%. And we can see from there that the curve is much flatter than the previous two, with it finishing way past the other two, with it finishing between 8 and 9 stops from mid-grey. So what does all this mean practically? Well, if we were shooting raw, then your gamma or colour space would not matter. However, with the R5, this isn't the case. We executed our over and under tests using both C-Log and C-Log3, and then brought them into Resolve, where we changed their gammas to C-Log2 and color space to Cinema Gamut, and then used a Canon Scientific LUT to get them both to YDR709. We can observe an obvious difference between the two when you look at both of the extremes of the over and under tests. This is odd, and could mean that Canon is doing some trickery when it comes to the Debeer as the gamma curve looks to be applied at record level, which shouldn't be happening if this was actually raw. Now, this wouldn't be surprising, as otherwise Canon, like others have been, would be in breach of RED's internal raw patterns. I've asked Canon for a clear explanation here, but have not heard back yet. So the takeaway here is that currently, if you want the most latitude out of the camera as you can capture, use C-Log3 when shooting in raw, and transform to C-Log2 in post. Canon's pack of scientific LUTs are a nice starting point for grading. Link to those in the description below. Talking about latitude, let's take a quick look at our over and under exposure tests. We executed our regular over and under exposure tests so we can see the differences between shooting C-Log and C-Log3. For these examples, we exposed our mid-gray on the chart to 34.3% IRE on our Atomos Ninja 5 waveform and shot at each gamma curve's respective ISOs, so 400 in C-Log and 800 in C-Log3 using shutter speed to adjust for the exchange in exposure between the two, as I'm not really moving in the frame. 
We then dragged the clips into Resolve, applied these raw parameters that you can see here, and used one of Canon's scientific LUTs to get us to a nice point before normalizing them all to the same exposure. Looking at overexposure first, we opened up our lens a stop at a time to three stops, where we then opened up in third stop increments from there onwards. When comparing the two, we can see both perform well up to around three stops. At four, we can start seeing the differences between the two gamma curves kicking in. Color is held well in C-Log3 and skin has only started breaking slightly here. When compared to C-Log, we can see that C-Log has clipped the highlights much earlier and colors look to have shifted too. At five stops, blue is held really well in C-Log3 when compared to the C-Log footage. Looking at underexposure, there is a clear difference between the two. The C-Log footage looks much cleaner than the C-Log3 clips. C-Log3 also seems to be shifting the image more magenta than C-Log does. Now this could be because of the base ISOs. With C-Log being 400 and C-Log3 being 800, we need to actually adjust the amount of light hitting the sensor to compensate for that change in ISO. This means you have less photons actually hitting the sensor and the step up to ISO 800 is introducing more noise purely because the sensor is applying more analog and digital gain. The C-Log3 footage looks more detailed than the C-Log clips as well though. So what can we take away from all these tests? Well, in regards to highlights, you are getting roughly a stop more and a nicer roll off when in C-Log3. When it comes to shadows, C-Log3 is noisier out of camera and will require some processing to get to a nice point. C-Log3 will be the better choice if you want the most flexibility in post, but it will require more processing, whereas C-Log will still be a good option if you don't have bright highlights in your scene or don't want to denoise your footage as much in post. As I mentioned earlier, we shot a little mini documentary last year, but never got round to finishing it due to other projects coming up, as well as new firmware coming out for the R5. However, I still do want us to finish it. So we've created a little cut of both this shoe, as well as a very quick walk down the canal near our Brentford office, where we shot entirely in C-Log3 and Cinema Raw Light. We have labeled what gamma either was shot in. And let us know what you think of the imagery down below. We also wanted to see how the R5 with C-Log3 matched with the C300 Mark III and C500 Mark II. So we shot side by side both in our studio and outside with the cameras in both C-Log2 and C-Log3. Unsurprisingly, it's fairly easy to match these cameras. However, shooting C-Log3 and Cinema Gamma on the R5 makes it a far easier task. One thing we noticed while out shooting was the C-Log3 view assist lot looks a little crunchy. It's okay for monitoring focus, but exposure? You need to be using a histogram or zebras in camera or some kind of exposure tool such as a waveform or false color externally, not just off the image on the monitor alone. I would also suggest setting your zebras to 90% and making sure you don't hit that when shooting in C-Log3, as overexposing slightly will yield you slightly cleaner imagery. Canon, it would be awesome for you to add false color and waveforms to the R5 and R6. Canon have also added a light version of RAW, which reduces the data rates quite a bit. At 29.97 and 25p, data rates are roughly 1700 megabits a second or 212.5 megabytes per second. And at 24 and 23.98p, it's roughly 1350 megabits per second or 169 megabytes per second, which is much less than the 2600 megabits or 325 megabytes per second of the full raw version. Now this means you can achieve almost half the data rate, which will be handy to get more runtime out of your cards. In regards to image quality, you can see maybe a touch more compression in our chart tests than the regular raw option. The normal raw option also looks sharper when we really zoom in. So with high detailed scenes, you will most likely see a difference between the two. However, for stuff like this headshot here, I doubt you can tell the difference. People have also asked if this new raw light has improved the overheating limit, which unfortunately it has not from our testing. Currently, the raw light footage will not work in Premiere Pro, just in the latest version of Resolve. However, I presume this will be fixed in a coming update from either Canon or Adobe. But if you want to take advantage of the light version now, Resolve is your only option. From our limited time with it in Resolve, it behaves pretty much the same as the regular 8K RAW footage does, so it will require some beef to get working, 
and it, but it does grade well. And we do prefer the image from the C-Log3 over C-Log. We found lowering the timeline resolution down to 1080p made things a bit smoother. And then when you want to export, make sure you change your timeline up to whatever resolution you're wanting to export at. As well as raw light, Canon also added IPB light, which is a lower bitrate version of the already existing IPB format. This is available both while shooting C-Log and C-Log3 in H6.5 and also not where it's H6.4. We shot our trusty test charts again with every single format of 8K, DCI 4K and Full HD. At 8K, when going through the different options, there is a clear difference between them all, with the IPB light clearly having more compression artifacts than the others. You can also see the raw footage is much noisier. Stepping down to 4K, you can clearly see the difference between the 8K footage and again, and unsurprisingly, the IPB light shows the most compression artifacts. At Full HD, you have such little detail in comparison to the other resolutions that I really can't see too much difference between the three different compressions. When it comes to playback, performance is equally as bad as the normal H6.5 offerings. So if you're shooting in 8K, I would seriously consider transcoding it before editing or shooting the downsampled 4K in camera. Overall, this could be a good option if you want to get some extra storage out of your cards and hard drives. And if you shoot 4K or Full HD, performance could be fine for editing, but with 8K, it's still worth transcoding if you want smooth playback. Canon have also added a 120p Full HD format. Previously, you could only shoot 120p at 4K, so this will be a handy addition for people not wanting to capture 4K because of the massive increase in data rate. In terms of image quality, unsurprisingly, the 4K image looks better, but if you're wanting to deliver in Full HD and want a slightly nicer playback experience when shooting in C-Log, this could be a useful addition to the camera. We've gone through the biggest changes of 1.3.0, but there are also a range of smaller changes for the operational side of the camera. It has enabled you to turn the LCD monitor off during shooting while still being able to use it for playback only. And this is similar to what you can do with traditional DSLRs. You also have the ability to save camera presets to a memory card, which you can then copy across different cameras or reload whenever you need to. You also now have the ability to override the focus of RF lenses manually when the camera is in servo AF mode. Just bear in mind that this is limited to a small selection of lenses currently. And lastly, you have the addition of Protect Image Transfer. And this allows selected images to be locked from deletion as well as transferred via FTP. When doing this, there is now an FTP transfer status on the display, and this clearly shows how long it will take to transfer the data. I've seen people complain about this update, and I personally don't understand why. The R5 is an incredible hybrid camera as long as you understand its limitations when it comes to its video mode. And all of these new additions to the camera only make it better. However, whether it's the camera for you depends on your priorities. I would really like to see C-Log2 added so we can see if the sensor can capture any more dynamic range as the gamma you select in the camera clearly affects the end image in RAW. It would also be great to see some better exposure tools for video creators like false color waveforms or even improved zebras. Let us know what you would like to see added to the R5 down in the comments below. And to stay up to date with our upcoming content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And thank you so much for watching.